on the YouTube channel, we're going to be reviewing the Death in the East End Saga Parts 1 to Part 3. And let me just say this. That these three covers, like these three covers that have been put together, are absolutely beautiful. Like the first cover that we saw was done by Glenn Lubston. And the second is done by Jason Paulos, and the third being done by Jamie Johnson, which they all amazing artists. Don't get me wrong there. And let's get into it. I hope you enjoy it, and let's go. The author for this story is done by Michael Tires, and the art being done by George's Best. This comic was first published by Egmont in Scandinavia Phantom number 16, 1987. And the key points, the key points to take away from the part one is on a journey into this story begins the Phantom is hearing of the good old white. When I was actually scripting this video, it was, I was actually doing some research and the first part of my research was when was the like the radio entered and like the radio first got conceptualized back in i think the 1800s like eight eight late 1800s so yeah i think when i'm just trying to say this the good old wireless how the phantom had to stop drug trafficking in bagnella and i think one of the great facts i researched in this group that are in this, in this video that I'm doing right now, is that the radio, did you know the radio was first conceptualized, it was thought, first thought about in the late 1800s, and we did not get, had like four different people that were involved in it, and one of the people that was involved with it was the famous, famous inventor, physicist, and I think scientist, which was called Nikola Tesla, and he was one of the most, he was one of the most smartest individuals of, I think, the 1900s, and, or like the 20th century, and he was just, he was just smart, he knew, he was basically, I would compare him to another, another good old brainy guy, um, Albert Einstein, like, you, those two people would change the way we think about things and would change the way, it would change the way we actually do things right now in this current um, time period. And that is why I like to say the good old phrase, the good old wireless. Then the Phantom starts to talk about a story that involves the 17th and the Sun, who would eventually take on the mantle of the 18th Phantom. Now, the first part of our story takes us to a small fishing town of Whitecliffe on the south coast of England. The future Phantom is hanging on a cliff with his mate and is spending some time with his friend. And then they realise that, I think it's, what, 8pm? So then they realise that, oh, oh crap, we're going to be late for getting back into what bed for school tomorrow. And so they rush back and they just get inside the door when the young 18th Phantom and he notices that, wait, hang on a sec, there's a light? Did I just see a light? Did I just see a ghost? in that window, and his friend doesn't believe him, so when he gets back to basically the campus and his bedroom, he finds out that, oh, hang on a sec, where are my books? So he goes back to inside the school, um, one of the things in this story, and in the next part, is that you've got, I'm not going to spoil it, but you've got to watch out for this supposedly identity of Madam X. Madam X. Now, one of the things I would also like to point out is the artwork. Now, I said earlier on in this video that the art done by George's Best, and 
I love when few publications, obviously you already know this, but I already, I love when few publications publishes the good old Sweden stories, like from the 70s, 80s and 90s, like they're so good. Even the history ones, like everyone knows that I love the historical phantom stories by Klaus Rue Murphy and one of them of one of my absolute damn favorites is the assassination of President Lincoln and everyone knows that and I find these kind of stories and the sagas and the different stories that I haven't read before quite interesting and even when they throw oh we'll just throw a little bit of history in there and a little history in there and yeah I think it's quite interesting how they develop these stories and the artwork then goes into it and one of the things he finds that when he's going back into the school is that there's this organization and he gets obviously at the end of this part he's going to be getting kidnapped and taken to taken to put on he's been kidnapped and put on a carriage and off to London now the reason why for that is because the conspirators madam x believes that this person that was obviously in the school at wrong time, wrong place, thinks that, oh, this 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 boy is a, someone that we do not want to have around. So they're going to try and get rid of him, to be, in fact. So when we reach in part two, we're off to London. But one of the things that I would also like to say is Few publications, you might already know this, but few publications have a new Phantom Generations trading card set. It is available, order from www.phantomcomic.com.au. It features American Phantom artist Jeff Weigel and comes in a deluxe set of trading cards showing the Phantom in his all of his costumes of that time. So, a while ago in the Sundays, we saw Jeff Weigel depicted a few of like the different generations of the costumes. We saw and updated costumes to do with this new story that was published, I think, last year or early this year. And it was, it it's quite interesting. And now we have a trading card set, which is awesome. Going off into part two, we're now. heading off to London, where the story takes a very gripping and dramatic part to this very well thought out story by Michael Terres. So, this part, obviously, the cover I said was done by Jason Paul. Good job, Jason. Um, I think Jason, with this cover, has very, very well depicted how loony this bad guy is. You laugh sometimes when you see something like cartoony and it's on a cover, and it just makes you makes you just. It's just a. I think when people use that type of like cartoony stuff on like a cover, it just brings like like comedic feel to it. But it's also talking about one of the panels which we will be getting into so the story as i said was is done by michael terrors and is still done by george best now this issue 1915 is the first issue of this year that we saw an increased updated paper so over what it lasted for i think five or four or three months and over that period of time, we saw sort of a more white to white paper and a more uh, upmarket paper that few publications were choosing to do with. And they gave a response to that. And their response was that a normal paper that we use isn't available right now. And so we have to try and source other paper. And one of the recent issues that came out couple of weeks ago may have been in early August was that they've actually gone back to the original paper which is this and this is the new paper which is like a more white to white and and this paper is the original paper that they've been using is sort of a more 
grayish white. It's sort of, that basically they're using higher quality paper and I thought that at the time that, that was pretty good when did a price increase to normalize them using better paper and I thought with a price increase I was happy to keep buying the Phantom at a higher price but one of the things that obviously they've done well is telling people this is what's happening this is how much is going to be and not just putting it out there, throwing it into your face and actually not giving any warning, which they didn't do. Like, they did say that they were going to do a price increase and that is that is awesome that they've done that and let's get into the story. Now, this part two, we as I said, is we travelled to London and one of the biggest things that we saw in London was that there's been revealing of that there's not only one identity but wait for it there's three identities so there's the first one the first one is the person that we saw in the first issue she's in a wheelchair and she's got a like a covering veiling to hide her face the second identity we see is that she's a chinese person and you sort of wonder so hang on a sec, you sort of wonder, why is this person doing all three different identities? Is it to cover her tracks? Or, and the third identity is just a well-known figure. It's a well-known wealthy figure. And she's basically trying to get rid, well, firstly, she's getting trying to get rid of the 18th Phantom, young 18th Phantom. And at the end of the book, we see that, obviously, the Phantom, he saves Kit Walker, but then he works out that, hang on a sec, there's not just one, not just two, but three different people doing the same identity. And at the end of the book, this book, at the end of the part, it's just, it's just going over all the, over the place. It's like getting to a very dramatic thrilling end and I just I'm just loving I loved this story when I read it and I think it's one of the best this may be controversial like I think in my own opinion it's one of the best phantom sagas or phantom stories that I've read this year and I just think that that's just my opinion and if you what what do you think of this saga that had been been published by a few publications? What do you think of the Death in the East End saga? And let us know your comments and opinions, and we'll get into the third part. So the third part takes us to a small fishing village, and the Phantom, he's going to be getting in some dire straits. Like... We've seen in this book. The common theme of this book is to do with dramatic partings. And one of the big things that happens in this book is the Phantom, obviously, he's doing the usual. He's going around to all the usual establishments and seeing if someone could possibly know any information about why these two young fishermen and yeah the, there's been two young fishermen and on the day that the phantom arrives in the village he is notified and he's talking to a couple of people and they say oh well, there's these two young people and they've um unfortunately passed away under mysterious circumstances and then the phantom says hang on a sec how did they pass away and yet the township people are not wanting to give that information and they're not wanting to give that information to the Phantom and wh where is this island? What? Who? Why did they go to the island? Like, is there a particular reason why they went to the island or did they meet um, very troubling circumstances with a specific person? After a while of the Phantom going around 
you'd say being a bit, um, them thinking he's a bit nosy and he, them thinking, oh yeah, we want to take this guy out before he ruins our plans. So he's gang, there's people ganging up on him and then this old folk comes, this elderly person comes along and he just smashes the crap bang, splasms out of the other, the gang people that are ganging up on the Phantom and him and the Phantom just absolute smash the, slash, smash the living daylights out of them and that I think is funny. I just think that's funny. There's all, there's four against, basically there's four against two and two of the, ba the Phantom and the elderly person actually, they just go, Bang, 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 and destroy the living daylights out of them. So, in return for the old fisherman's help, the phantom asks, "Could are you able to take me to the island? So he takes him to the island. The phantom is then captured. After a while of the sea coming to try and destroy the phantom, the phantom then gets out of his predicament dungeon, he was and... Then the Phantom, after a while of doing that, the people that had locked him in the cell find out he's missing. The Phantom causes some havoc. And at the end of all this, you do reckon so that the Red Hand, the organisation Madam X is all gone. But it leaves, leaves, it leaves us a thrilling, a dramatic thing, a commonly associated theme in this book and leaves out something to hang on the line. Could Madam X be still alive or is she finally perished and could the Red Hand come back? I have to wait and see like there's going to be more comics featuring this organization in these stories. And if you haven't played the new Phantom board game, The Treasures of Dracon, then it's available on few publications or at their website called thephantomcomic.com.au and you can get it for $135, including postage. Now, I've already read that. If you want to know further information about the Phantom Generations card trading card games, you can go to www.phantomcomic.com.au we also have a new graphic novel that came out late last year and it's called The Phantom Ghost and the Monster. It's available at phantomcomic.com.au for $34.95 plus postage and it's now available at... Now, there's one last thing I want to talk about is... Just look at them. There we go. There's all three covers for you, and if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, you can do if you want to, and as always, keep being some caving, and we'll see you on another YouTube video.